So hello everyone and uh, welcome to Astrology Conversations. Um, so today we it's our week where we're going to look at what's happening with the Venus Moon portal. So in this group, if you're watching on YouTube, we have a, a little group that we've been following the cycle of Venus and she goes through seven descending gates and seven ascending gates and we're now at the sixth gate the which resonates with the Ajna center that's coming up on the Thursday the 22nd of June um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to begin looking at the new moon which was a couple of days ago and um, these Venus moon gates usually always actually follow a few days on from the new moon interestingly so the new moon kind of seeds an energy then we have the gate and i was really excited to kind of get a glimpse of where venus is taking us um as a virgo i tend to have to sort of take things in bite sizes sort of one gate at a time and then suddenly sometimes i like this time, I, I suddenly see or perceive the larger vision of where the cosmos is, is taking us on a journey. And in a nutshell, the, the words I would use for the cycle ahead are virtuous leadership through the path of forgiveness. So I'm just interested to see where that actually takes us. And... Um, it's quite interesting in, in Britain and America, there's kind of a whole new saga playing out with Boris Johnson and Donald Trump right now where it's like, are they going to get elected again or are they going through their final swan song, you know? And, um, and it's quite interesting that it's happening on both sides of the Atlantic and these leaders are, are very similar in many characteristics that they're very, um, you know, they, they break all the rules. So they've actually been part of the whole structural breakdown acceleration that we see in the world. Um, but I think to call either of them virtuous leaders, <laughs> wherever you are in the political spectrum would be quite a push. So, um, and it's something I've been really interested in because I've been watching a TV series called Borgen, which is actually set in Denmark. Um, and the third um, series is on Greenland and um, a whole kind of environmental story. And it's really amazing insight into how even the best politicians, like the forces they're under, how they get corrupted um, in their passion and their path. So we can go from like that huge level of virtuous leadership in the world. But ultimately, you know, what we can do is to think about and contemplate virtual, virtuous leadership in ourselves, in our families, in our communities. So I think one of these things about forgiveness that's going to unfold is that this, this kind of way we tend to view the leaders out there as the problem and we're kind of um, just carried by it all. I think that's going to shift into seeing that actually what the leaders are reflecting are also patterns in ourselves that we can begin to kind of unknot and and get to much higher frequencies. And as we do that, we'll see a shift in the leadership of, of different countries as well. I'm hoping to prove myself right on this. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to begin the presentation. Um, we're not going to be doing light language today because I have quite a lot to get through in terms of just looking at the, the big unfolding cycle. But I feel it's going to be um, really good for us all to get this kind of eagle eye view of um, where we're going towards. And um, it's just kind of a first glimpse, like looking at it through binoculars 
and the journey is going to be different for all of us and something that you know it's um we share together really okay so let me start the slides Okay, so as I mentioned, the main topic today is going to be the Venus Moon Sixth Gate, which is the Ajna Center, the Third Eye Resonance. Right, but before we fly into that, just want to give you a bit of an idea of what we're going to be doing. Um, well, it's part of it, really, because... It's these are the things that we're going to be doing that take us deeper on this journey. Um, so with the astrology sessions, I was just saying this before we started the call. Um, I feel like we need really need to slow down in order to start kind of more deeply integrating these trans Neptunian objects. Um, so Sedna is kind of the big one at the of the moment and they're bringing in big um like deep emotional healing their new streams of consciousness and and the thing i'm really interested in and this kind of came to me was we're we're learning to listen more deeply to gaia and the oceans and we lost this ability when we did kind of apollo and gaia we saw how we actually lost our ability as humans to listen directly to the earth and this is something we're re-establishing and quite interestingly that came through um danny's body talk last week it was it felt like a real confirmation that this thing about deep listening is is really important so we've got the um the first gate coming up uh sorry the six Six gate. Um, it's going to be eight till ten a.m. on Thursday. Cynthia's going to do us a beautiful chakra balance. Patricia's going to introduce the dream arc creatures for the seven, and then we're going to do some creative writing inspired by the dream arc. Um, one of which is the um, mountain goat. So. Um, yeah, it's interesting because Patricia contacted me earlier and then I've seen the mountain go twice since then. So um, I feel like the, the that mountain energy is really calling to us. Okay, so then Venus is going to complete her evening star cycle in July, just a few days after the seventh gate, which we're going to look at today. Um, and she has this 40-day retrograde, which I always think is amazing because in Kundalini Yoga, they say it takes 40 days to change a pattern in your neurology. And so we're going to do a mudra practice for 40 days. Um, and the keys that are relevant are the 33, Revelation, the 4, Forgiveness, the 7 is Virtuous Leadership, and the 29th is devotion, which is perfect for our, um, our priestess kind of energy archetype. Um, and there's also going to be an opportunity to work with the Aponopono forgiveness as a daily practice with Kristen in June. Um, and yeah, I mean, I could tell you some amazing stories about forgiveness especially self-forgiveness in relation to my adopted son and and i just feel that forgiveness is the most incredible key to open these vast energy fields and invite grace into our lives so i'm very um interested to, to see how that all goes um so the next Venus star point is going to take place in Leo in August in Jinky 4, which is the forgiveness one. And this is going to open this whole Leo, Venus in Leo uh, meta goddess cycle. Um, and we're going to look at some of the key dates as we go through this presentation. Okay, so. <laughs> 
why am I going to talk about the Temple of Juno? Um, so many years ago, in, uh, in my 30s, I went to Samos Island in Greece, and I was uh, making flower essences in that time of my life. And I went to the Temple of Juno, and I felt really guided to make the flower essence of bindweed. Um, I don't know if you guys get this in America, you'll have to tell me. But bindweed, um, it grows up things, it's a bit like ivy, but it's got these beautiful white flowers. And so what was really interesting is that yesterday at the new moon, which is con was conjunct Juno, um, I found myself in my own new garden untangling bindweed from all these lilies and remembering the kind of healing message of bindweed and and Juno who's the goddess of relationships is a is about how when we cling on too hard we start to strangle the life force in our relationships and it's quite funny, these, this particular boundweed had gone around the flower of these lilies so strongly that unless I'd untangled it, these lilies wouldn't have opened, basically. They would have been kind of stuck before they flowered. Um, and this has just been a massive teaching that's come through this past year is about clinging onto things that make us secure, whether it's our partner, our job, our identity, our home, and just kind of breathing in to releasing those attachments so that we can expand and grow. And it really feels like this new moon conjunct Juno um, is all about this kind of letting go, finding new ways of doing things. In um, So here's the new moon. If you look in the 12th house, this is based in London, so we won't go by houses. Um, but yeah, so this was in Jinky 12, this new moon, and you can see there that Juno is one degree away at 27 degrees. So this whole theme about relationships, the sacred marriage, um, is really tied up in this new moon. And then in addition to that, Mars and Venus are beginning this dance together. So we can see them here in, in the third house. Venus is at 11 degrees Leo. Um, Mars at 16 degrees Leo. And this is Pallas Athena at 20 degrees Leo. And for the next few months, they, until Venus starts going retrograde, actually, there's gonna be this dance of Venus is the feminine, Mars is the masculine, Pallas Athena is all about our, our leadership quality. She's the warrior goddess. And in Leo, she's she's very much creative fire in leadership. You know, that creativity, the creative self at the heart of being a leader. Um, and also, if we kind of just go back to what we learned about, um, you know, the kind of corruptions of the priestess oracular tradition from ancient Greece, it was Pallas Athena who bought the oracular um, python to ancient Greece, and then that is the python that's kind of killed by Apollo. So I feel that, that Pallas in this dance is also restoring the oracular powers, the ability to really listen directly to the earth, listen to the ocean, to the birds, the, the dream arc animals. You know, this is what that speaks to me about. Okay, and at the new moon, we had a grand trine in earth. So Sedna and Morsomna, which means death in the dream world, they are here with Vesta 
and Astraea um, in these final degrees of Taurus. Um, we have Pluto here in the eighth house at 29 degrees Capricorn going retrograde. And um, then we have Ceres, the mother goddess, a very strong position for her at 29 degrees of Virgo. So if you couldn't catch the call yesterday, we did this amazing shamanic journey to Sedna. Um, so it's in the classes and this is quite a nice one to kind of meditate to or go to sleep to, bringing in the healing of Sedna in this grand trine in Earth. Okay, so here is our Venus gate. So we know where these Venus gates are because they're formed by a monthly Moon-Venus conjunction. And if we look down here in the fourth house, we can see that Venus and the Moon are at 14 degrees Leo. And this is Gene Key 7, um, which is all about virtuous leadership and guidance. How... Do we be a guide to people and, and role model? Well, it, it's kind of so obvious in a way, isn't it, that the journey begins with ourselves? Because if we can't guide ourselves, how can we possibly guide anyone else? So this really calls us to be loving and nurturing to ourselves. Um, ah, now I didn't mention this, but at the new moon, Saturn was actually stationary and is now going retrograde. So Saturn is in the 37, which is the mother energy of tenderness. So this again, <clears throat> you know, it speaks to me of um, the way we guide ourselves successfully is through being really nurturing, listening to our bodies, eating the right food for ourselves. Um, yeah, and we've got the summer cleanse coming up, so we can get some further guidance on, on from Tara on, uh, you know, how to strengthen our fire energy in the summer. Um, yeah, so I mentioned before that Sedna and more Somna, who's another shamanic initiation, trans-Neptunian object, they are with Vesta and Australia there. Um, very powerful, this Venus moon gate, we're in the equinox. So you can see there the sun is at north degrees Cancer. That means it's passing, that's the summer equinox point in the northern hemisphere. And Jinki 15, which is all about the, the light, the fluorescent light in our bodies, awakening. Um, yeah, and and Ceres is actually square the sun. So there, there could be like a, you know, maybe feeling not well, feeling like something going on with the body that forces us to um, take our self-nurturing more seriously. And, um, and then finally, just to mention Haumea here, the goddess of rebirth, she's um, on this point where the south node and north node are. Um, they're about to change um, signs, the south and north node, you'll see in the next chart. Uh, but Haumea is on this point, and there's a lot going on in these... Um, changing points in the zodiac in the in the north degrees 29 degrees um, so a lot of energies are shifting when we see that okay so we will go into this one more this is the venus moon seventh gate this will be our final gate and that is going to be, um, you can see it's conjunct the star Regulus, who's the heart of the lion, at 28 degrees Leo, 29 minutes. Very powerful position in the zodiac again. And this is Gene Key 29, line 5, which uh, happens to be my attractor field and my ascendant as well. So I'm very excited about where we're ending up on this journey. 
Um, and months back, we began in the 30 in the root chakra first house, which is the programming partner of the 29. Um, so what this 29 opens is devotion. Devotion really to our own spiritual path, devotion perhaps to the path of really taking care of ourselves, of being the best leaders of ourselves. Um, and you can see here that the dance of um, Venus and um, Pallas Athena and Mars is carrying on. So that is that kind of pushes into um, this is the 20th of July that this chart is for next month. Um, and you can see we've also had the nodal shift. So they've moved from the Taurus Libra, sorry, the Taurus Scorpio axis. And now the nodes are on the Aries and um, Libra axis there. So that's very powerful. The south node is conjunct Halmia, who's this goddess of rebirth. So this is going to be great energy, actually, for um, when we start doing the rebirthing sequence um, in, in the mid-August mid as well, how Mia conjunct the South Node there. Okay, so this is when the Venus retrograde cycle begins just a few days later on the 22nd, 23rd of July. Well, here we have Venus stationary as she's turning direct at the same point. So what we find is when these planets start to slow down, when they, when they start to turn retrograde, so we have her actually standing still, Venus, for about three days. And this is a very, very powerful time for Venus. So... Um, you know, put that in your diaries and, and see what happens there. And it's also as the sun moves into Leo, you can see there in the 12th house there. Okay, and then finally we get, this is going to be the next Venus star point. So the Venus star point we're in now is the 50 line 4 which was the first Venus star point in Libra at 29 degrees Libra that begins this journey out of the Scorpio Venus star point. So the last Venus star point was really important. And this one in Leo, um, I've called it the path to virtu virtuous leadership through forgiveness. And it's going to take place on the 13th of August, 2023. We will have a ceremony. We will do some more astrology around it. Um, but yeah, so the Venus star point is in the Jinky 4, line 2. It's squaring Uranus, they 22 degrees Taurus and Jupiter's at 14. So not quite Jupiter, but... That's going to be very powerful because Uranus brings sudden and shocking changes. So um, we might make some big breakthroughs in this dynamic shift. Um, and, you know, the invitation is really to focus on things, struggles with forgiveness. You know, you can't just forgive something that's happened that's really deep, like abuse or, you know, it's a, it really is something you have to go deeply, deeply into. And this is an opportunity to do that. Sometimes it's our parents, our children, um, but the forgiveness is really for us and it's, and it's going to release a lot of energy. That's my feeling. And then the Venus star point is also trying Chiron and Eris. So it's interesting to me it's trying Chiron and Eris because um, Eris is, is one of those bodies that um, some of you will know who are in the Delta 
that the, te the, the kind of teachers, uh, although we try not to kind of create too much us and them feeling in Soul Tribe, but we, we did three deltas together. And one of the main things that came out of that for me was this appearance of the Eris energy um, that, that came up kind of three times that I noticed it, which you could in a nutshell call women bitching about each other <laughs> in a very divisive way. This is what the Eris like negative archetype is all about. And it's really programmed into us as women to undermine each other, you know. And so um, I feel like this is like another layer of working together as women and how we recognize when we've been triggered into division and other othering and all these kind of things that Eris is about. Um, and, and ultimately, I see Eris as, as like a gateway to the synarchy energy. So if we can't if we can't transform the Eris energy, we'll never get to synarchy, really, because she will create too much division in the field for there to be synarchy. So we have to kind of transcend. Um, almost like the egos need to be superior or to take revenge sometimes. So that's what Eris was doing. And to, so quite a bit about vanity, the story of Eris and, and all the other goddesses, like totally forget their own power and start bickering with each other. It's, it's quite an interesting myth. So at some point we'll do Eris because I think she's important. Okay, so... These are the energies that are coming. Um, so I'm interested to hear from you if you felt this kind of maybe a, a call to leadership, you felt any of these gene keys, the four, the seven, um, are the, the kind of ones that really stand out in my mind. But I've talked about quite a few there. Um, whether you feel like the pressure to step into leadership right now and, you know, mo anything really that you feel can help us understand what the energies are more of the, of the moment. So I'm going to mute now and let someone else speak. 